Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to Rural Heritage TV. We have a special story for you today. It has horses, antique vehicles, a parade honoring former, current, and fallen veterans. But more than anything else, it's a story about a grandpa and his granddaughter. Ron Christensen lives in Reedsville, Wisconsin, where he has a small herd of Percheron horses. Ron is beginning to get up there in years and so is delighted that his granddaughter shares in his love of the Percherons and spends as much time as she can with Grandpa at the farm. Emma Christensen is not a big woman, but she has a positive attitude and a smile as big as the day. She trims cattle hooves for a living and does whatever she can with the horses at her Grandpa's farm. Yes, the last pair of horses on the farm was Flory and Nancy, and they were bays, reddish, you know, with the black legs and yeah, black yeah. mane and tail. Right. Flory and Nancy, Mary and Gelling. And when I was a child, they sold them, and I lived right down here. Now, your half. parents or your, gran your grandparents? My, my parents. Your parents, okay. And my oldest brother was taking over the farm at the time. He was 18 years older than I. And he wanted these tractors? He wanted tractors, yeah. yeah, yeah. He had F-20. Okay. Old tractor, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it was modern then. Right. Yes, it was big. Anyway, they sold them horses, and I cried for three days. So they bought me a pony. Okay. And I've had horses ever since. Yes, the last pair of horses on the farm was Flory and Nancy, and they were bays, reddish, you know, with the black legs and yeah, black yeah. mane and tail. Right. Flory and Nancy, Mary and Gelling. And when I was a child, they sold them. And I lived right down here, now, an island half. Your parents or your, gran your grandparents? My, my parents. parents okay. And my oldest brother was taking over the farm at the time. He was 18 years older than I. And he wanted these tractors? He wanted tractors, yeah. yeah, yeah. He had F-20. Okay. Old tra you know. Yeah, yeah. And it was modern then. Right. Yes, it was big. Anyway, they sold them horses, and I cried for three days. So they bought me a pony. Okay. And I've had horses ever since. And uh, so then after, I'm trying to think of when it was, it was probably around 1978 or 79, we bought a, a team of Belgians, and we had Belgian horses, and then we switched over to Percherons. And uh, why, I don't know, but we did. And uh, we had as many as 26 at one time, that's quite a few. Right. You can't do them all justice. Right. And uh, so we've always had perch runs and uh, show at the local county fair and uh, do a lot of parades, weddings, funerals, etc. And hobby. We cut hay with them, find corn, did everything with them, and raised colts. And uh, now I have the luxury of having a granddaughter that you could see. Uh, safety is a big thing. When, when, we do, when we do rides, uh, safety is, 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 a, is a big thing. So we have people walking on sidewalks on both sides, yeah. and uh, like two people on each side. Yeah. And that's family. Okay. That's grandchildren, right. whatever, okay? Right, right. And uh, to, in case they're needed, we've well, never had to. Crazy oh, yeah. You never know. No. Right. No. But these two have came. Uh, we did a wedding last Saturday, and, and they had to stand. We got to the oh. church oh. before the wedding began, and it was an outside wedding, and they stood all that while. Oh. Yeah. See, he's a little bit... Well, the camera went off and doesn't Yeah. If you would have asked me to do this by myself like two and a half years ago, I would have told you you're crazy. 
But I, I had mules. We, we raised a, a pair of mules out of uh, two black Fertrons. But we sold them there in Tennessee. You did that for fun? Yes. Something to do? Something to do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how, how old did you get them before you sold them? Did you break them? They were born here. Yeah, but did you break them? Yes. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I bought these guys in 2021. Um, kind of just spur of the moment thing. I knew I always wanted my own per se, but I was nervous to train them on my own because it was something I've never done before. So we found him and I always say that when it comes to barn work, I'm so much like my grandma. But when it, like my grandpa, you see a horse in the sale barn and you're like, yep, that's the one. Um, so we saw him and I was like, yeah, he's pretty cute. So yeah, he ended up coming home with us in what have been April of 21. And him and my retired gelding, you know, hit it off. We did a lot of groundwork. Um, he stood here with music, you know, blaring as a, you know, a sound. Yeah. Right, right. And, you know, things were going really well. And, you know, I mentioned to Grandpa that maybe get another young one, you know, and start a team. So we went back to Nielsville in September, and we actually found a black one that we really liked. Came in the ring, and he ended up being lame. Hmm. So he was like, you know, we circled a couple in the book, and he was the, like one of the later number ones. And we're like, well, you know, now what do we do? Right, the other one's sold already. So, so circle, yeah. yeah, so we took a, a walk through the barns one last time, and she's actually standing outside, not in the barn, so we never saw her right away. And my dad and I actually saw her. He was sitting in the stands, and we saw her, her little tag on her butt, and we told the grandpa, we're like, well, she's, she's coming up, so this is our last option. Um, so she, you know, then she came home in September, and then for probably six, eight months, Brandon was with us all the time. He was hitched in the middle of them, you know, teaching them, you know, how to go. And then he ended up coming up lame. And Grandpa and I are like, well, you know, now's the time. Hook them together. Right. They, they've been driving, t you know, three abreast for six months. With jockey sticks? With no. Nope. Well, in the lines. Yep, okay. in, a li in the lines. Okay. <coughs> and ever since then, it's kind of just been trial and error. I mean, yeah. we have a close friend up the road that has an indoor arena. Um, so she let me trailer them up there and I free lunge them. And I think that has helped immensely when it comes to ground quietness right, right. and manners. Right. And even you'll see when we have the lines in our hand, you know, they are very good with word of mouth when it comes to that kind of stuff. Voice command. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that is, you know. How old are they? There'll be four in Next August year. and September. Yeah. Yep. So when you when you took them, they were unbroke. They were halter broke. Yep. Were, That's just, it. Just yep. Halter broke. They did tell us that he had sat with a harness on, so probably what he's doing right now. Yes. Yes. Um, but never never anything else. So everything everything happened from the ground up. <laughs> We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. Field work has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting, and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo, or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle, and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon, and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down, all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. We use those harnesses that are actually hanging right there. Those harnesses were on saddle breads. They're like 40 yeah, some years what old. That's what we started with. Okay, because yeah. they were little. Yep. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. 
Where's your black halters? Oh, I suppose I can, yeah. I don't like halters underneath the bridles, but she has some thin black ones, and yeah. I say that's okay. Right, um, yeah. Everybody's got an opinion on that. I get a kick out of people who have really strong opinions on other people's horses. It's just more of a safety thing, I'd say. Absolutely. Those horses totally trust her. They totally trust her. Right, right, yeah. They know that she will not do anything that's going to harm them. And they, they listen to her. And uh, like when she's done, they'll stand right here with no bridle or halter on, and they'll stand right there while she goes in there and gets treats for them. And, uh, but they... And you've done yeah. a bunch of different yeah. stuff. Oh, back. You lived with them this past Yeah, look in the mirror. See how pretty you are? I got back. You guys fooled with them in the woods a little bit this past winter. Yeah, we yes. went logging. And you yeah. got them on that grain binder. You oh, yes. You put them to the manure spreader. Yep. Oh. They're going to cut hay this year. No, I got the hay mower out. They haven't done that yet. But. You got a McCormick number nine or something? Yeah, it's, uh, where is it? Up in the yard. Yeah. I I there, yeah. Yeah. Where are you going, Ronnie? He won't go no place. He is tied. I don't know what he's doing, though. What are you doing, dude? What are you doing? Yeah, he's my little spitfire, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My little spitfire. Oh. Oh. Did you braid them up for the parade, or do you always have them in braids? No, she'll take the braids out tomorrow, and then their tails will be nice. Yeah, right, right. Nice and, nice, oh, that yeah, 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 they're long tails. They're not, we don't dock no more. Right. Those, those, those are feet. registered uh, cold salt back, and uh, but we, I won't dock them no more. No. I don't do that. Good. Yeah, those are my They're both good though. They are. They complement each other. He's got a little bit more zip to him, and she's a little more steady. Yeah. And, uh. I don't help her on purpose. Yeah, right. And she won't learn if I'm helping her, right. you know. Right. She's got to do it. He's just not as fast as me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, will you? Yeah. I figured it was something like that. I just didn't want to say. So what's it mean to you to have somebody from the younger generation in the family? Oh man, like it, it's a, it, it is a, huh, couldn't be any better. Right. She gets them all ready, I get to drive them. <laughs> when we're done, if it's cold, I go in the house where it's warm and she puts them away. And uh, but we have a good time with them. And uh, I, I love driving them, yeah. I do. Right. And, uh, kind of know that your legacy is going to keep going on. Yes, I do. Yes. I mean, after you're gone, they'll still be yep. out telling stories about you. Yeah, I told, um, I told the guys at the Manitowoc in the parade, the Legion and that, I said, when I'm not here, them horses and that case on will be in that parade every year. It has been all nigh on to 30 years, not to and it will be. Yeah. Yep. Someone in the family will be doing it, yes. I think this mm -hmm. time of the year is, especially Memorial Day weekend, is pretty close in our hearts because that and as she went this time was the first time that these guys were ever in an event was the Memorial Day parade. Yeah, that was the first thing they did, yes. They have ever really? done anything. Mm -hmm. So my white mare was... The 2022 my, Memorial Day parade was the first event they were at. Yes. Yep, really. a year my ago. White, my white mare was with my retired gelding on the caisson and then he, he was my rider list. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this year... We've come very long in the last year and a half. Yeah. You know, we're just gonna run with these guys. 
Hello, and thank you for watching Rural Heritage today. If you've enjoyed seeing horses work in the field, please consider visiting the American Vermont Association's Fall Rendezvous, October 6th and 7th in Bellington, West Virginia. You'll see American Vermont horses logging, field demonstrations, plowing, loose hay, and a precision driving contest. So please give us your consideration if you'd like to visit us this fall, or to learn more, visit theamericanvermontassociation.net or look for us on Facebook. Thank you. What's one of the key things that you think of that's important for training horses? My attitude reflects on their attitude. So if you're calm and if you're positive, methodical and yeah, if you yeah. have energy and you're okay. Yeah, I think, you know, that goes a long ways. Patience, which some days are better than others, you know, and grandpa always says you gotta end on a good note. Okay. The horses always remember that. So you know, we could be having the worst day, but if the horses hold when they when you want them to and you ask them to back up three steps, we end on that then. Right. Grandpa and I do this together five days out of the week. Right. My dad and I do it, you know, once or twice a month yeah. together. So, you know, that way, you know, you really wouldn't think it'd make a difference, but it, it sure does. You grew up with saddle horses then? I mean, you seem like you must have been horse crazy most of your life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I started with that little black and white pony. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then when I was in grade school, high school, like, I would help out. I really wouldn't say I was involved. Um, but when we'd go to the fair or other events, you know, I would be there, but I didn't really know much. I would say probably the year I graduated high school is when I knew I wanted this to be my life forever. Okay. Um, I think I was too involved with all the other high school sure. activities right. that I, I knew this was always going to be here, so right. I didn't focus too much on it. Right. Um, and Take then, advantage of the other stuff while you could. Right. And then once, you know, I was away at college, I think it really hit me that, like, I got to come home and do what I love. Like, I come up, up by the hitching pole. Oh. 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 Oh, your other side, honey. I know. I'll come and we'll handle it more. Who? 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 Got it. G. G. I'll do a loop in the grass. I'm going to go around that tree. I'll come back. Oh. Easy. Gee. Come ha. Come ha. Come ha. Easy. Easy. Johnny James. Come ha. Come ha. Come ha. Back. 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 Ho. Nothing. Ho. Ho. Sand. Right? Hmm? Do we drop nothing? No, I don't drop nothing. No. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452.
This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com.